Hi guys, welcome to our webinar on how to safely buy an RV. I'm Tim Richardson and uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, bringing in some experts today to help us out, uh, answer a lot of questions that you guys may have. And uh, this is all about your questions and, and taking care of you so that um, you understand how to not get taken advantage of. So uh, I have David Durnell, we're gonna, I'll introduce him in just a second. Um, while we're uh, waiting for everybody to get logged in, um, Go ahead and look for the little chat icon. It's got the little bubble, a uh, little feed bubble kind of thing, the cartoony thing. Uh, click that and go ahead and tell us where you're coming in from. Uh, maybe your city or your state, city state, and uh, we'll say hi to you as we uh, get everybody, everybody up to speed here. So thanks for uh, taking time to join us. I have a uh, number of topics we're gonna talk about. Uh, we're gonna start off with the whole idea of hidden fees in just a second. So. Uh, yeah, so we have Dana from Maryland, uh, Amy in Nashville. Hi, hi, folks. Hi, James out in Houston. Um, we'll talk about Houston. Uh, we, we've been doing some stuff down in Texas lately. And uh, George, good to see you. Crystal from Monkey Island. Nice. Thanks for Harriet joining us from Manalapan, New Jersey. I don't think I <laughs> said that right. I just, uh, anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and get started with introductions. So, I'm new to the RV industry, only been doing this for a few years, but uh, so I brought in David Durnell. Uh, this guy um, was a school teacher, loves people, and loves, uh, loves seeing people uh, raise the level of excellence and education, and that's what we're going to do today, hopefully. Hi, David, and I'm going to make you uh, doing good. Thanks for uh, joining us today, and uh, yeah, well, you've been in the RV industry how many years now? I believe this is our 23rd, believe it or not. Wow. So just, just a little that, tiny while. Before that, you were teaching what? Oh, geez. I taught uh, eighth grade uh, history and social studies, or uh, history and uh, language arts, and then sixth grade uh, history and language arts for about, well, a little over a decade, actually. Oh, yeah. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate your willingness to teach us some things today. And uh, let's just get started and um hidden fees is something uh i didn't really know about until i uh, started watching folks come into your dealership and what well, you sell thousands of rvs uh here so uh you've probably seen it all i imagine by now and uh, what yeah. are some of the things you hear and um ways that we can help protect our folks that are here today thinking about buying an rv yeah i'll tell you you know tim i would almost call it um uh, well, I, I hate to use the word, especially this year, but almost uh, uh, like a uh, epidemic. Uh, you know, it, it's it's such a the, the hidden fees are such an enormous problem now in the industry, and oh. it's taken the the credibility of the industry and just really uh, harmed it. You know, I mean, you you have people that are trusting dealers that are uh, going to um, their lots, right? They're doing research with them. They're meeting salespeople. They think they're developing a relationship. Uh, with these people, they feel good about it, and then they go to pick up their RV, and all of a sudden they own thousands more, literally thousands more uh, than they thought they did originally. You know, it's just it 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 really is a very very um, troubling situation because it takes people's faith in us, and it and it and it just destroys it. You know, and it, it it's um, it's far too common. There's a there's a big um, uh, chain of um, RV dealers. Uh, RV dealer chain, um, you guys know who it is. They they sponsor a NASCAR race and a couple other things, and um, yeah, they're they're hitting people now with a minimum of fourteen hundred dollars in hidden fees when they pick up. But uh, that's you know, and, and that's a staggering amount. And what what these dealers are are betting on is they've taken a, a one to five thousand dollar deposit from you, and they're hoping that you won't give that up. In order to avoid paying fourteen hundred dollars or three thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars, uh, most of them now though the hidden fees are well over a thousand dollars. So that's that's kind of the gamble they're taking, right? You've already put down a thousand dollars; they've got that in their pocket. 
So the gamble is uh, you'll be willing to pay the extra fees to not give up your thousand dollars. You know, kind of what we're wanting people to understand is there is a there's a third option. That third option is uh, go to the dealership. You're negotiating with them. Get that price in writing and say to them, I, I want my price out the door in writing. Number one. Uh, number two, if the price changes even a dollar when I come to pick up, I want it in writing that I can have my deposit back. And if you if you do that, you're 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 pretty well protected. If the dealership won't put it in writing, you need to get up and leave. Uh, there's no more discussion with them. Anything else? They're not being honest. You just you just need to get up and go to another dealer. You know, and, and uh, before the question pops in, because the question always pops in right at the beginning. Um, why do you do this, right? Why do you guys do these webinars? Um, simple, you know. This year we're we're going to cruise past uh, uh, two thousand real easy. We've got a real shot at selling three thousand units. Um, now we're already over two, but there's going to be over five hundred thousand new RV sold this year. Not counting used. That's just new. There's no way that we can sell. 500,000 RVs. It, it just isn't possible. We wish we could, but we can't. So we do this to educate the people that we can help. You know, then people say, so you don't want our business. No, of course we do. We, we would love to sell everybody in this webinar an RV. You know, we, we would love to take care of you. But again, we can't sell to 500,000 people just in the United States. So this is our way of saying, hey, obviously everybody can't buy from RV wholesalers. So follow this, right? Follow these steps. Protect yourself, protect your family, protect your finances, and uh, you know, protect your investment, and and things should work out pretty well. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for sharing that, David. Yeah, um, I appreciate your heart and uh, just watching how you take care of uh, people has been an encouragement to me personally. So keep up the good work. Um, we have a question from Laura, and this kind of ties in um, with helping take care of people. What do you think about this? We we bought an RV in March, could not pick up until May. Then it's been in the shop since then, haven't been able to use it yet. Fighting for warranty work to be complete, completed, what can we do now? Um, I don't well, want to scare everybody, but uh, this is an interesting question. Yeah, it is. You know, and, and Laura, one thing that we do here is uh, we'd have you bring your RV in and we would uh, troubleshoot it, figure out what's wrong with it, uh, order the parts, but then have you come get it in camp. Um, if you had a major issue where you can't use the RV, uh, let's say the air conditioning's out. You know, even today it's going to be, I think, 86 degrees here. It's kind of humid, so it wouldn't be comfortable for you uh, to camp in it. Then we would give you a, a free loaner RV. Uh, we have a, a fleet of um, rental units that we have that we would give you one of those at no charge. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is ask that dealer for, uh, uh, no one else does it in the country, but doesn't mean you can't ask. Uh, go to them and ask them to give you a, a unit that you can use so you can camp. But the other thing I would do is, depending on what's wrong with your coach, is ask if you can come get it and go camp until they get the parts in. Uh, they're selling so many RVs right now in the RV industry that the manufacturers are way behind, so the parts manufacturers are way behind. Uh, so getting parts is a little bit of a problem. Uh, so it really does make sense to camp with it until that, service center gets the parts in for you then you can bring it back drop it off let them uh, repair it and and you know again that's that's what we try to do here you bring it in we go through it we troubleshoot it we order your parts we call you back when your parts are in we try to fix it while you're here so you don't have to come back again to pick it up um, and if not possible you know then then again if you need if you need a coach to use that one's going yours is tied up we're going to give you one to use at no charge so don't be afraid to call and ask that dealer to do that uh, exact thing for you. That's good. I'm glad she brought that up uh, because that's things that when you're shopping for a dealer, that's those are the kind of questions you should be asking and run them through scenarios like that. And yeah. See how they. You want to find somebody that will do like David said. Uh, take care of you. Camping is what you are buying the RV to do, right? Not yeah. Safe, uh, it, uh, you know, and, and again, I don't know how the industry forgot that you know what i mean they don't people don't buy them to have them sit on a dealer's lot you know waiting on repair uh they buy them to go out and camp and right now especially you know there's so little that uh so much of this country can do people are camping like crazy you know it, it gives us all a break it gives us all a uh, 
an outlet, you know, and it's it's something we love to do anyway. So it, it really has been uh, important to all of us this year, you know, to say the least. Um, yeah. I saw where George said. Um, yeah, we'll get to that when we uh, that's talk interesting. about it. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's bring that back up. George, we're going to talk about financing and the fine print, and that's a great example that you just gave us. And we'll, um, yeah. we'll bring that up in just a minute. Um, Crystal talked about um, the rush of construction, and um, she's thinking that maybe there will be more issues. Why don't you talk about one of the hidden fees called PDI? Explain what that is and what you guys, what people should be doing to prevent issues, even in construction, if there are. Yeah, the the, the PDI guys is called uh, uh, is short for pre-delivery inspection, and what that means is the dealer should go through your coach. They should check your uh, propane system, make sure there's no leaks, make sure it's safe. They should check your electrical system, make sure that everything functions, all the outlets, switches, etc. Uh, they should check your water system, make sure that there's no leaks in it. They should also check all your appliances to make sure that they are uh, properly functioning, that you don't have any issues. You know, you don't want to pick it up and the refrigerator already doesn't work, for example. Uh, so they should go through all those things. Uh, they really shouldn't be charging you for them. That should be, um, you know, worked into the price, the cost of doing business. But we're seeing that a lot. We're And we're seeing... Uh, PDI charges anywhere from uh, $800 to $8,000. Uh, they're really getting bold with them. You know, so you want to, I'm sorry. Does that, just show up? Oh, does that just show up then when uh, you're going to sign the paperwork or? Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. You know, you, you show up to uh, pick up your RV and all of a sudden, you know, your price is $1,300 more, you know, $2,800 more. And you're like, well, hold, hold on a second. That is what we agreed to. Well, we had to PDI it. Well, what's a PDI? It's a pre-delivery inspection. You know, we, we had to do that. I mean, everybody should know that. Uh, things like that are the, the silly things they say. They try to make you feel like you're an idiot because you didn't know that, right? So they hit you with all these different fees, PDI being a big one. And then they try to act like, how did you not know that? You know, and, and uh, make it uh, quite matter of fact. Some people are charging walkthrough fees. Uh, walkthrough you have to have. And when you pick up your unit, there should be a technician that goes out with you, shows you how to use everything on your trailer, shows you what everything is on your trailer, shows you how to properly maintain your trailer. Uh, a lot of guys are charging for that now. And again, when you put up a fight, they'll say things like, well, you know how to use it? You didn't need a walkthrough? Of course you need a walkthrough. Uh, we have to pay these people. And again, you know, they, they try to make you feel um, uh, bad, kind of ignorant, right? You know. How did you not know this? Um, and, and, you know, the whole thing's made to kind of uh, guilt or embarrass you into paying the fees and doing it quietly. Uh, you know, they, they don't want to fight from you that they're trying to rip you off. So they try to do it in a way that makes you feel silly or, or ignorant. You know, and again, they try to guilt you into it like, well, you know, that guy has a family. Shouldn't he get paid? Sure, but you should pay him. <laughs> you know, not me. You should pay him. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of others, Tim, that, that they'll hit you with, finance fees, all kinds of stuff. Um, the only fee, there's a couple that that you should expect. One is a dock and title fee. That's how they get their title uh, processed through the state. Uh, that fee is normally set by the state. Like in the state of Ohio, that's a $295 fee. Uh, and you should expect to pay a, a factory freight fee. Uh, that's the cost of getting the unit from the factory to the dealership. Uh, some work it in, some charge it, most charge it. But again, make sure it's a reasonable fee. You know, uh, we're fairly close to the factories. Uh, some people are further away, but you'll see where they've got a six thousand uh, dollar, you know, factory freight fee. That's crazy for anywhere in the country. Yeah. So. Uh Thanks for the info on the fees. That's um, definitely, yeah. I like the idea of just make sure it's in writing. It's right. out the door price so you know exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Bob asked if we could put together a list. That's a great idea, Bob. Uh, we'll work on that. Um, I don't know if I'll get that out today, but um, uh, that's a great idea. Thanks. Um, talk about trade ins real briefly. We don't have to spend much time on that, but. Um, what do you think uh, you should do for a trade-in? How do you uh, get the most for your trade-in, 
Well, uh, my my best advice to uh, people that are thinking about trading is don't uh, sell it yourself. Sell it outright. Um, you can go to RV Trader. Uh, you can go to Facebook Marketplace. Uh, there's several there's several avenues open to you. Uh, uh, the reason I say sell it yourself is used are in such high demand right now. If we get a used trailer and we sell it within an hour, literally, I mean it's it's uh, it's gone immediately. So do yourself a favor and put that money in your pocket, right? And, and this is one of the ones that gets us some of the most hate mail uh, from other dealers. Is you know why'd you tell people that we can make the money off of them? And sure, you know I love to make money too, but we don't need to make all the money. Uh, so, you know, we always encourage uh, customers, try to sell it yourself. If you absolutely don't feel comfortable and you want to trade it in, okay. But, again, protect yourself. And, and here's a real quick thing. We get uh, people all the time that will, uh, you know, be working to deal with us, another dealer, and they'll say, we'll give them a price for their trade. And, and let's say we're 9000 the other dealer's 12 And they say, well, they're giving us a lot more for our trade than you are. Mm -hmm. But what's your bottom line price? What that means is, when you're done buying their new unit, trading in your used unit, what are you paying? When you're done buying our new unit, trading in your used unit, what are you paying? The lower one's the one you want. doesn't matter what they say they're giving you for your trade. A lot of dealers are, are price gouging right now, especially. So they'll offer you what looks like a lot more for a trade, but they're not really giving it to you. They have so much more built into their new trailer. So how do you protect yourself from that? Simple. Ask this one question to them. Uh, say that they offered you twelve thousand. We're offering you eight or nine. You can say, if I don't buy your new unit, will you still buy my used unit for twelve thousand? When they say no, get up and leave. Don't don't stay. There's no, nothing to negotiate anymore. Again, they're being dishonest. So get up and walk out. You know, I always tell people, uh, we we vote with our dollars, right? Uh, our dollars have a lot of say in this country. Uh, if we decide to boycott something, for example, uh, not spending money makes a big difference. You know, well, same thing here. You vote with your dollars. If you sit there and let them take advantage of you on the used, they're going to continue to take advantage of you. And what you thought was a good deal is going to cost you anywhere from, you know, 3000 to to ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 more after hidden fees, uh, fake trade prices, etc. But again, a great question to ask is, if I don't buy the new one from you, will you still pay me 12000 for my used one or whatever the number is? If they say no, you need to leave. If you called us and said, hey, offer me nine for my uh, used unit, uh, I'm not buying a new one from you. Do you still want it? Yes, we'll still take it because that's a real offer. And it's, it's based on the um, NADA book. A lot of people ask, well, how do I get a price list for um, used units? Uh, you can go to NADA.com. Just know that it's a little bit high meaning that the banks and the dealers use a book, okay? We, we go buy a book, and the banks and, and dealers use the same book. That's how the bank knows roughly what they should lend on a unit. The NADA.com, the price comes in a little bit high because they allow you to choose options. In the book, they don't allow us to choose options, okay? So you might find a dealer that argues that price a little bit with you or a bank that won't loan quite the amount you think, you know, if you're buying a used unit. That's why, uh, you know, one allows you to choose options, one doesn't. And, you know, again, with the used one, just just make sure that you feel comfortable, you know, exactly what they're doing. Um, if they ask you for the title before you've given, you know, finished the deal, sign the paperwork, don't give it. And people say, why is that? We hear of trailers being sold all the time and the people never get paid for them, you know. Uh, that's especially important on consignment. Keep the title until you're you're paid, then do a, a trade. I'm gonna throw my email up here. If, if you want to figure out your the price of your unit um, based on our NADA book, uh, I'll connect you to one of our sales guys that can look it up and know all their details. So, yeah. Can I throw one more thing in, Tim? Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna trade, don't tell them you're trading until you've negotiated your final price. Okay, uh, that's a that's a really really important thing to do. So if, if I'm going to trade in my um, 2014 Wildwood on a 2020 Wildwood, I want to make sure I've negotiated my best price with the dealer. Then I tell them I have a trade. Okay, don't do it before they're going to keep money there to try to build into uh, 
again, look like they're offering you a lot more than they are. So again, don't mention a trade until you have uh, negotiated the final price with the dealer. What say uh, RV Trader and some of the kind of places if you want to sell it yourself? Yeah, Facebook uh, Marketplace is a good one. Uh, Craigslist, just be careful. There's a big scam on uh, Craigslist where people uh, buy your used unit, say, I'm going to send you a check. And you got yours for sale for 10000 They say, I'm going to send you a check for fifteen. Just send me the five back. Uh, and of course, the check wasn't any good. So you know, just avoid silly things like that. And you'll be okay. That's good. Um, there was one quick question before we get into financing. Uh, Bob asked, "Is there is does anybody make a toy hauler that can actually you can drive a, a four door sedan or a small car into?" Uh, Nomad. Nomad, yeah. Yeah, okay. Stealth. Um, that would be the only one I know of. Uh, none of the rest are, are uh, weight rated and they're too high off the ground. So a, a car like that isn't going to be able to make the entrance. There's just uh, not enough clearance. That makes sense. All right, so financing. Um, George, I'm going to go back to George's question, comment. Um, he says, please read the contract and know the actual payment before you sign. The chain you mentioned negotiated a price with me through the paperwork process out several days or weeks, I don't know, uh, to get me to sign the contract that was jacked up in price. I told him, nice try. So good job, George, and uh, it was a lesson for all of us. Uh, maybe tell us a couple other things, David, that you've seen like this that uh, make you really want to pay attention to a small print, and then uh, I think you've got something interesting to share with them that could save them uh, thousands of dollars or something on their deals. So. Yeah, no, you know, and I agree with George. You want to look at your finance paperwork. For one thing, you want to look at the part that the dealer's uh, typed in or, or, or maybe handwritten, either one. But uh, look at what amount they say you're financing. If you're financing $19,500, it better say $19,500. Uh, if it says $22,000, guess what? You're financing $22,000, and I don't think they're giving you the extra money. Uh, matter of fact, I'm sure of it. So... Uh, read through that contract very closely. Ask questions like, um, is there an early payoff penalty? Uh, if so, how long do I have to keep it to avoid the early payoff penalty? Uh, you know, things like that. But the biggest thing is read through the contract. Make sure you're, that it states you're financing what you think you're financing. If there's a discrepancy, bring that up. Don't just sign it and think, oh, well, I probably misunderstood. No, just, just make them explain it to you. Uh, you know, and again, you're the boss. Uh they work for you. You don't work for them. So don't be afraid to slow the thing down. Don't be afraid to say, you know, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. I need to read this. Uh, well, you know, we have other customers waiting. We get, well, uh, when I'm done, I'm done. You know, but I'm making a very big purchase here. And I would uh, very much so like to take the time I need to take to do my uh, due diligence. Again, if they have a problem with that, you need to get up. You need to leave. Uh, why the rush? You know, what's... What's the issue? Um, you know, my dad used to say that if someone accuses you of doing something, be careful because they're probably doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, so if, if a dealer's rushing you and acting like you're being uh, uh, uncooperative or, or, or don't you trust us? No, why would I trust you? I don't know you. Uh, I've used that exact saying many times in business. You know, people, again, try to guilt you into signing something. Don't you trust us? No, I, I don't know you. How, how can I trust you? We have no relationship to build trust on yet. Uh, right. So again, just just take your time. Don't don't be bullied. Don't be pushed. Uh, don't hurry. And you know what? If you if you ever have a question, call us. People say we can call you and buy from you. Sure, call us. We'll help you. We'll we'll uh, help you out with what to look for. If something doesn't seem right, trust your gut. Don't don't take a chance on a purchase this big. Make sure that you feel very very comfortable about it. Well, that kind of goes with what Laura said. She found out that even though she paid for tire protection that. Uh, and she had new tires, found out it wasn't available for the tires. Uh, and then so she paid for it. And it's like, where did that money go? <laughs> Apparently not uh, for, for RV. So, um, yeah, and you and know, said, yeah. go ahead. No, uh, she went on to say that she tried to exchange and it was a $20,000 up, upgrade charge if she wanted to go camping with a different camper. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and I'm sorry to smile. I really am. It's not funny. Don't don't misunderstand my my reaction. It's it, you know um, disgusting. Maybe is the only word I can think of, Lauren. And unfortunately, we hear this stuff 
all the time. You know, um, it's it's just sickening. And I apologize on behalf of the industry that you're, you know, put in that situation. And, you know, again, guys, uh, uh, ask what products are, okay? You know, like, for example, a uh, tire and wheel, uh, if you camp at a campground and never move your RV, we don't sell you tire and wheel. It has no use for you, you know. But a lot of people buy tire and wheel that sit in a seasonal park and never move their RV. They don't even, they don't even have a tow vehicle to move it, and they pay for something that they don't need you know, something that will never benefit them. So, yeah, just, just really read through the paperwork. And, again, I, when you don't feel right or it doesn't look right, get up and leave. You're the boss. So uh, tell us about uh, something that you discovered in the finance world that I think will be a huge help for these folks that are getting ready to buy. Um, I yeah, th this blew me away, and I had no idea. Yeah, it, you know, it, uh, we figured this out by accident, guys. Uh, we started offering financing right through banks uh, in order to make it more convenient for our customers and to ensure that when you got here, you could leave with the RV because a lot of times uh, uh, small city banks, um, uh, like where I live, uh, very honestly, they, they um, aren't comfortable giving you a check, right, to go to a dealer. They want the dealer to send them a title with, with them as a lien holder on it, their names on the title, literally. Um, the problem is, is like our bank that we use that pays for our stock, they won't accept that letter. So it puts you and I in this very awkward spot, right? Your bank's saying you're good for the loan. My bank's saying, though, we need the check. Uh, your bank's saying, I won't give you the check until you give us the title. You know, we get in this tug of war that neither one of us can win. We don't need it. So what we started doing was offering finance to make sure, number one, for convenience. Number two, when you showed up, you could take your RV. We had already had everything worked out with the bank on your behalf. Then something really interesting happened. We started getting checks from banks. And I don't know about you, but I don't have banks sending me checks too often. So we uh, we started investigating. They said, well, that's the basically the finder's fee, right? Uh, if you have a customer do a, a loan through our bank, we're going to pay you. We were shocked is, is not a strong enough word. We can believe it. So then we got to look at it. It's quite a bit of money. Uh, it can be thousands of dollars very easily, and that isn't why we were offering financing. We didn't do it to make money. So we immediately thought, you know what? Let's just give it to our customers. So that's what we do. Uh, it's called a finance discount. If you finance through one of our banks, we pass that money to you, and you get it. Uh, we do it right at the front of the deal so you know what it'll be. You don't know how much more money you're saving. Uh, people love it. Dealers hate it. This is the second thing that we get terrible amounts of uh, hate mail on. Why would you give them that money? They didn't even know about it. And I guarantee you, people don't know about it. People have never heard it. A lot of people don't believe it at first, but it's the truth. What I really love is there's uh, a couple big dealers in the country that try to make it like a bad thing, right? Oh, don't buy from RV wholesalers. They'll make you finance with them. We don't make you finance. You can pay cash if you want. You can go to your own bank if you want. We can just give you thousands more off, hundreds more. Uh, if you do go through one of our banks, because we're honest and we give that money to you. Uh, it, it it really is amazing, though, how that just infuriates dealers because, again, man, they want that money. You know, they, they want it. So that's happening on the car side as well as RV. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, uh, uh, through this uh, uh, pandemic thing, uh, bought my wife a, a minivan and uh, – not that it matters, but hers is getting pretty old. It's like eight years old, and uh, I finally wrestled it away from her. We got her new one, and again, I, I waited until I had my deal done. Then I brought up the, the, the trade. I didn't like what they offered me in a trade, so I kept it, sold it myself. Uh, but then, again, once the deal was done, I told them I wanted part of the finance money, and I wish you could have seen their face. It was like, uh, whew, you're not supposed to know about that. What are you talking about? You know, and so... There's always a denial at first. They're going to come on strong, tell you that they don't get paid by any banks. They don't know what that guy's talking about. You know, he must be smoking something. That that doesn't happen. It happens. Trust me. If you go through one of their banks, you're getting paid. We do have one bank that finances uh, people with uh, really bad credit. It's the only way to say it. Uh, and we pay them $75 to do a loan. All the other banks pay us. So if they pay us, we can pay you. And any dealer can pay you, okay? If they say we're not allowed, or do, 
They can do whatever they want with their money. There's no law against it, nothing else. Stephanie asked what that's called. What do you call it when you're referring to this? Um, uh, you you could call it a kickback. You could call it a finder's fee, either one. They, they'll know what you're talking about, though. You don't need a... You don't need a technical term. Just say, if I do a loan through you, one of your banks, they're going to pay you. I want part of that money. And I always tell people, figure about 2%. You should be able to get 2% out of them. Uh, very honestly. That's a, lot, that's a lot of money. A lot of cash. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a huge help. It was, yeah. It's not just $100. Talking about, so that's good. Thanks. Definitely. Sharing. Um Talk real briefly about uh, the industry and uh, COVID-19 and how uh, some of the things you guys are doing to help uh, people that may not be as comfortable buying right now uh, for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we kind of, two things. Number one, we tell people that uh, campers were social distancing before it became cool, right, or unnecessary. Uh, the second thing is we were kind of, uh, our dealership was kind of built for this because uh, we've sold RVs all over the United States, Canada, all over the world, you know, uh, for years, uh, decades, actually. And, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of new people come into the RV industry because they don't want to get on a jet anymore. They don't want to stay at a hotel. Uh, they don't want to be around crowds. They do want to social distance. They, and, you know, here's a big one, Tim. I think that this thing has been so taxing on everyone uh, mentally you know, emotionally, um, way more than physically. And I think people just want some control back in their lives. You know, when the government tells you, go home and sit, we'll let you know when you can come out. There's not much control there. You know, people are losing jobs uh, for a while, or at least, you know, temporarily. We, people are sent home. And, and I, I think it's a big thing is people just want some control. And camping gives you total control, safety, and protection over your uh, vacation now because you know what when I buy a new RV I'm sitting in my tow vehicle or I'm sitting in the motorhome driving it right I'm not dealing with other people and I don't have to worry about who's sick on this airplane or who's sick on this train that's not a concern to me I'm, I'm in my own controlled space if I don't let anyone in I know I'm 100% safe and when I when I cook meals as opposed to going out to eat again I know exactly who's touched my food what's been done to my food, and again, I know that I'm safe. Uh, my bed. I don't have to worry about bed bugs. I don't have to worry about a virus if, if the sheets weren't changed or anything else. Again, I have total control of that, right? I, I, I'm the only one that's been in my RV. I've cleaned my RV. I know that my RV is safe. Uh, and as long as I control who comes and goes, I'm safe. Now, the other thing we do here, because we have to go into your RV, we have to uh, do the pre-delivery inspection, right? and then we clean it, is we've added a, another step. Once we're done checking all the systems, once we're done making sure everything works, we clean the RV as we've always done. Then we do one one additional step now. We treat that RV with an agent that uh, we're guaranteed kills the COVID virus and other viruses. And then we put a seal on the doors, okay? If you have a, a toy hauler and you've got the garage door, the ramp, uh, you've got two entry doors, yours is going to have three on it. Right? If you buy a bunkhouse, they usually have two doors. You're going to have two seals on it. But what the seal says is we've cleaned it. We've treated it. It's 100% free of, of COVID-19, and you're the first person that's going to open that. You know, Then you decide if you want our people to come in and help you out or you know, give you a walk through whatever inside or if you want to do it outside. Uh, so it, it really is a, a way to help you know that you're safe, completely safe. Uh, some people are wondering, are we going to have a recording? We're going to actually email you all a uh, link to a recording about two hours after this. So don't worry about taking notes too well. <laughs> we can, uh, we'll have it coming to you. Or if you have uh, connection issues, you'll get a recording that you can just skip around and play yeah. back towards the listen again. I threw up a poll while you were talking, David. How many, this will be your first time buying an RV? And 82% uh, are just getting into this. So that's, uh, that's encouraging to see uh, new people coming on board and maybe talk a little bit about um, what was being asked by Mike uh, about quality, like, you know, just give us a little ballpark, what to expect from manufacturers um, these days. 
Say that again, what to expect when? Oh, quality wise, um, how do you, you know, like what are some things to look out for? Um, oh, sure. Manufacturing yeah, it, wise. You know, a, a, a really, um, a really good measuring stick is look at what we carry. If we don't carry it, don't buy it. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we dropped the number one fifth wheel in the in the nation. And the whole industry was like, "What are they doing? You don't drop that line. You know, that's a, that's that's it. Why would you ever give that up? Other dealers are, you know, literally willing to kill for it. That that makes no sense. This is crazy. Well, it's real simple. Their their parts and their service were no longer backing us up like we need them to for the customer. So we don't have any choice. You know, we're gonna we're gonna carry products that are. Uh, great in quality, but also we can get parts, we can get approvals, right? We can get permission to repair your unit. We can do so in a timely manner. Uh, when that starts to fall apart, we drop the line. Uh, we dropped two that are on our lot right now about six, seven years ago. We brought them back. They got they got their act together. Uh, you know, they got their ratings up. They, they got their parts department fixed. They got their, their if you want to call it warranty or service, whichever, uh, fixed to where you know we could get quick approvals from them. We can get you fixed. We can get you on the road. So you know, if you're wondering, look at what we carry. People always bring up like uh, Jayco and Grand Design. Those are two that come up every time. I've already seen it in the questions today. Why don't you carry those two? The main reason is both were bought out um, by private equity companies and by a large RV company. Anytime a unit's bought, stay away from it. They need to recoup that investment uh, quick. They need to recoup it. So what do they do? They cheapen the units. They don't cover as much on warranty. Uh, they decontent the units. You're just not getting the same product. That usually takes anywhere between five to ten years. So you you know, uh, our advice is don't don't sell it. Don't touch it. You know. Um, but again, if you're confused, just come look at what we carry. You'll be you'll be very safe. Well, the one thing too is the floor plans are the floor plans. So once you figure out what floor plan works for your family, right? Uh, there's a number of different manufacturers. They all they all figure that out. And they look at the numbers. Oh, everybody's buying this type of floor plan and this one. So they'll make those two floor plans or ten floor plans, twenty floor plans, and uh, just have different names for them. Or sometimes don't we see like uh, say a, a big group of dealers will get a custom name or number to a uh, a floor model or floor plan or yeah. model and then uh there may be the exact same thing by the same manufacturer right. just a different thing so. yeah like uh uh camping world tries to get uh, a private label right so you know it's just it's built right. in the same factory as another unit uh there's a million uh examples you know they try to say it's because they're special no it's because they don't want you to price shop them that's what it is you know, um, a, a lot of uh, larger chains try that garbage, and that's all it is. They they, they want to make it hard for you to shop them. Uh, you know, if, if they tell you that their unit out there is just a North Trail by Heartland, that's who builds it. Their Mallard um, is one of those examples, and and the Mallard is uh, like a North Trail built in the same factory. But they decontent it quite a bit, like no solid surface countertop, for example, uh, years ago. So then you don't know that a Mallard and a North Trail are the same coach, so you don't know that you should shop them, right? Um, it, it causes market confusion is what it is. You know, so again, we just, you know, encourage people to avoid that type of situation. Uh, you know, you, you should always be able to shop. Uh, multiple dealers to get a good fair price. Well, if you're buying a Mallard, you can shop Camping World or you can shop Camping World. Uh, hard to get Camping World to negotiate against Camping World. Uh, it's kind of like price checking Walmart against Walmart. Well, you already have the price, so they're not discounting it, you know, if that helps. Um, we're going to get into talking about extended service contracts and warranties and uh, uh, one thing I've noticed that you uh, you moved your office uh, from the sales floor up to a little uh, attic space with what six other people uh, in the service and warranty side. So I appreciate you sharing kind of quality things, reasons why you 
how you choose your dealer, your manufacturers, because of what you see on the when you have to fix it in. Because you're talking to the customers, you're seeing what's happening. Uh, guys, he's been up there probably what at least a year. Just uh, with yeah, his a little longer. Even longer, yeah. yeah. Service and warranty side of things. He's not sitting in some corner office overlooking a lake. Uh, <laughs> and this uh, David Moore, him and his brother Mike are the owners of RV wholesalers. So, uh, so I think that says a lot to how you like to take care of people. So thanks for sharing some of the inside information. I didn't want people just to think you're just making this stuff up, but you're you're living it every day, uh, seeing the yeah. Process. Yeah, I mean, it, it. you know, one of the reasons I went up to service was uh, we we weren't taking care of people uh, in a quick enough manner, right? Uh, we had some people grumbling, which we never have. Uh, so it was very disconcerting for us. So I, I uh, jumped in right away uh, in service. I'm still in service. I'm staying in service. But then a, a plus of it, it, it gives me a great feel. I have a pulse uh, very quickly on which factories are taking care of customers, which ones are shipping us parts in a timely manner, right? Which ones we're getting answers from quickly. And again, this year we're making adjustments. There's uh, three lines that, that we've already dismissed um, that that we aren't going to have uh, from this moment on. And that's because of what I can see in, in here in service. Um, and you know what? It's it's the most important part of a business, That's the, uh, of an RV business. Most of our competitors don't realize that, but if – if you don't take care of a customer, they're not coming back. They just aren't. They're going to go buy somewhere else. You know, and, and we always like to say that we like to say your third RV. People are like, third, I just want one. No. If I say the first RV and I, I change the pricing a little bit, you know, you let me get away with it. I don't give you very good service. You come back in, though, because I'm your local dealer, right? You say, well, last time, you know, the price changed and the service wasn't great. Because campers are wonderful people. They really are. They're great people. They're, they're amazing people. So they give people second chances, right? The dealer says, this time your price will stay the same. Uh, this time we'll take great care of you in service. They bring the service manager out. He apologizes, makes all kinds of promises. You buy your second RV better, be, uh, there. Better the devil I do than the devil I don't, right? Uh, I, I have somewhat of a relationship with these people. So you buy your second RV. Guess what? The price changes again at time of pickup. Uh, service still stinks. You're not going back a third time. So we tell people we want to say your third RV. So we know that we've got to do the right thing uh, every time you buy the RV. Price is the price. It doesn't change. The service is, is above your expectations. For example, we know we're the only dealer in the United States that gives out uh, free loaner RVs if, you're, if your RV is out of commission. Why? That's the way it should be. You're making a payment whether you have the thing at your house or it's sitting here. It doesn't make any sense. You know, you bought a camper to camp. You didn't buy it to sit at a, at a dealer's lot. So, yeah, you know, this this stuff is important to us uh, more than I can tell you. Uh, and it's very important to us that we stay involved, which which helps us know exactly what's going on with our dealership. Yeah, thank you. Um, before we get into the uh, extended service contracts, let's take a couple questions. Cindy asked, uh, being new to buying a travel trailer, what else does she need to buy to think about buying? So it's just, you don't want people just taking advantage of her, like, oh, you have to have this, you have to have this. But what are, there are some really important things that you see that we'll need. Yeah, you, you know, you need, a, you need a good starter kit that has, like, a, a good sewer hose in it. You're going to need some wheel chocks. You need a good drinking water hose. A lot of people say, well, I'm just going to go buy a garden hose at the at the local hardware, right, or Lowe's. You don't want that. You want a, you want a drinking water safe hose. One that you know that your your family's not getting a bunch of rubber particles and stuff through, uh, but but again, one that's you know drinking water safe. Uh, you want a, a a good quality sewer hose because you don't want that to fail on you. Believe me. Ooh, uh, make sure you use toilet chemicals in your in your black water tank. Keep the valve closed. Make sure that you uh, clean that out at the end of your trip, and then put a little more chemical in it. So when you drive home, it kind of sloshes around in there, keeps everything clean. Uh, wheel chocks are a big thing because it helps keep the, the, the trailer from shaking. Uh, personally, uh, I buy extended warranties now. I did when we got into the business. It's kind of funny. you know. I'd, I'd go buy an appliance, and they're like, you want extended warranty? I'm like, no, I'm not stupid. You're not ripping me off. Uh, but then I, I found that there's actually honest uh, people uh, out there that do sell good extended warranties, which is where we're going next. But I, I would recommend that. Uh, if you tow a lot, I would get tired wheel. If you don't tow, I wouldn't. 
I'd get slide out awnings, and that'd be the last one I'll talk about just so I don't bore everyone to death. But I'd get slide out awnings unless you stay on the beach. If you beach camp, don't get slide out awnings. There's too much wind. Uh, anywhere else, normally though, you're 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 safe with them, and they're they're a great investment. They prevent a lot of leaks, uh, pre prevent a lot of damage, things like that. Yeah, because a slide out, you have this big unit sliding out, and then you have what branches and leaves and yeah, uh, things uh, falling on top. You don't realize they're sitting up there. You close it, and it punctures your seals, and then it's yeah. up, you know, up and, and then you then you've got a real mess to say the least. So that's a good idea. Uh, Rodney, Rodney just asked, do we carry the redwood? We do. Uh, if you give us a call, Rodney, uh, we can take care of you. Yeah. Um, very good. Well, talk a little bit more about uh, warranty because there's some that are good and some that aren't so good, right? Yeah. Uh, there's two types of extended warranties. The first one is uh, stated. Stated you don't want. A stated Extended warranty, what it what it does is covers exactly what's written on the contract, nothing else. And and they're they're never good. They should be really, really cheap, but they're not. They're <laughs> dealers sell them as expensive as a um, exclusionary, right? And then they don't cover anything. So you don't want stated. Ask that question. Is this stated or exclusionary? Then make them show it to you in your paperwork. Don't take their word for it. Make them show it to you, okay? Uh, now the type that you want is called an ex exclusionary. It covers everything but what is listed on the contract. So all systems are covered except for what they specifically list. There'll be a very short list of things not covered. But again, you do not want stated. You never want stated. There's never a case for stated. Uh, go with exclusionary. Now, the other big thing is check the rating of the company that backs it. So there's always a company that backs it. There's always an insurance company. Make sure that they're an A or an A-plus rated company. If they're B or lower, don't you don't want to get away from it, okay? The reason is insurance companies kind of rank themselves, right? You know, that's a, a loose association. So anyone below an A, you don't want to do business with. So A or A plus, you're in great shape. Uh, cost wise, you want to you want to be at ten percent or less of what you're paying for the RV, okay? Uh, so ten percent or less, exclusionary and check the rating of the company. They should be an A-plus or an A-rated company. Uh, but if you look at those three things, again, exclusionary, A or A-plus rated company, and the price is 10% or less, never go above 10%, 10% or less of what you're paying for your coach. That's good. Thanks. Um, there was one question uh, Kira was asking um, about a toy hauler that he could bring his trike with him. Uh, what do you recommend? They have a brand new Ford F one fifty for it. Uh, okay. Oh they want uh, was it fifth wheel or travel trailer? Did they say? Uh, fifth, yeah, fifth wheel. Yeah, I would I would look at the um, XR Boost. Oh, actually, no, it didn't say so. So XR yeah. Boost would be fifth wheel toy hauler. What would be one that's not a fifth wheel? Probably. Well, I would look at the Boost for both uh, travel trailer and fifth wheel. But if it's a travel trailer, I'd also look at uh, XR Boost. I would always look. I would also look at the XR Hyperlite. Uh, those are really, really good for half-ton trucks. Now, there's a few uh, fifth wheels you won't be able to tow, but most of them you can tow. Okay, good, thanks. And then, uh, on the warranty thing, the sometimes you hear about these warranties for life or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember being at a dealer show and, and they were telling us as dealers on. Well, you should carry this because you get an extra nine hundred dollars a month coming in the door on service things that you can you know, make every year on these uh, folks that have this warranty for life. Yeah, <laughs> my red flags went up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I always tell people uh, two things. Number one, run because if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Uh, number two, they are either going to force you back to the dealership once a year uh, for. An inspection and you pay for the inspection well that's how they're getting their money for the thing right uh, you pay for part of it up front it's it's tucked into your price so you don't know it and then you pay them every year to inspect your unit of course at the inspection when they charge you is when they do most of the repairs and you just pay them to do it the other thing is I always find it funny that these dealers that, that have a lifetime warranty 
still sell extended warranties. Now, you know, as Forrest Gump says, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a smart man, but I'm smart enough to know that if I have a lifetime warranty, why do I need an extended warranty? Right. <laughs> That's really odd. Uh, so that alone should tell you, you know, that it's, you, you don't want it. I don't care uh, what the dealer says. There's three or four of them out there now. Walk away. And people say, what do you mean walk away? Walk away from the dealership. You don't want to do business with them. It's, it's, it's not legit. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, I wish we had time to answer all your questions, but uh, if you email me, I'll uh, hook you up with our salespeople that can answer your questions if we get into uh, more detail. But talk about, uh, we had one question that came through about uh, by uh, anybody in my guest in Central California, and maybe just uh, this is your time. Uh, everyone's been uh, gracious to uh, learn, and uh, I want to take a few minutes, David, since you've given your time today, just allow you to talk about how you sell nationwide, um, not just Ohio where you're located, and how you service uh, and take care of people that way. Yeah, and, and that actually goes along. I just was reading Eric's question, how do we service an RV uh, from you if we do not live anywhere close to you? So that'll, Eric, I'm answering your question in particular as well, as what Tim just said. First of all, if you're in Ohio, uh, we can always take care of you. Um, we have our, our locations in Lakeview, Ohio. If you're in Texas, we're just opening a new location there in uh, Dodge City, Texas. Um, so we have those two locations. But we've, you know, we've been doing this for 23 years. We've got over 2,500 uh, service centers, dealers, etc., that we use in our nationwide service network. So it really doesn't matter where you live or where you camp or where you travel or if you get, you know, we've had people that have, have bought an RV and got transferred. Nobody wanted to work on their RV. Crazy. Um, but what we do for you is you tell us where you live, you tell us where you camp. They're not always the same. So we're going to find you someone that, that helps you where you live and someone that helps you where you camp. Uh, and we have people, again, all over the country that take care of our customers. And uh, uh, it's really simple. We make the appointments for you. You show up, you get your repairs done. It's very, you know, it's, it's very, very efficient. Uh, an example I would give, because a lot of people say, why do I need that, you know? Well, let's say uh, you, you're, well, I'm just going to give you the exact customer. I won't use your name. We had customers years ago come in, and they lived in, uh, I believe it was New Jersey. Uh, they had a toddler, and they had an infant, a, a newborn. Uh, they were they came from New Jersey here, picked up their RV. It was a Rockwood, uh, which is one of our best-built units. They headed down to uh, Disney World. Uh, they wanted to take the toddler there, and, of course, newborn. They'd leave them at home. And... Uh, they get down to Florida. They actually stay in the uh, Fort Wilderness campground and uh, starts pouring down rain, which happens almost every day in Florida. Water's coming in the air conditioner, uh, and they could get they couldn't get the hot water heater to light, so they had no hot water. And they had an infant and a toddler, and then they have water pouring in the coach. Uh, so of course the toddler's on the floor playing in the water. Uh, Mom wants a hotel room immediately. Dad's trying to explain to her, we don't have the money for one. We just bought this RV, right? Uh, so trips are on. So they're 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 going to have to head home. Well, then they call us. They remember what we told them in the in the walkthrough and stuff and the closing paperwork. They called us. Uh, I end up actually talking to the gentleman. We find a, a guy that we have there, real close to Fort Wilderness Campground. He's there in like 10, 15 minutes uh, for them. He tightens the four bolts in their air conditioner. Come loose. On the trip down, right? You know, they went halfway across the country, uh, stopped the leak, and then he showed them how to use the water heater. There's nothing wrong with it. They just had not remembered properly how to use it. So he took them through that. Their entire vacation saved. Had they bought from a local dealer in New Jersey, they would have called, and the dealer would have said, what do you want me to do about it? You're in Florida. I'm in New Jersey. When you get back, bring it in. Well, think of the damage to the unit from all that rain, you know, coming in when they're driving down the road. Uh, and again, their their vacation would have been ruined. You know, they didn't have the money for a hotel, so instead of staying at Disney World, they're headed back to New Jersey. Uh, so you know, that's where when people say, "How do you do it? What do you you know? How's it work?" That's how it works. Uh, a lot of people say, "Why do you do that?" Because it's the right thing to do. Uh, it's what everybody should be doing. We should all be working together, whether we sold a unit to a customer or not. We should all be working together to make sure they're taken care of, so everybody wants to keep camping. Uh, thanks, David. Um, 
and I, I mentioned that I was going to have a little special for those people that kind of stuck it out to the end here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you, I'm going to put this in the chat right now. Um, and what you're going to do is, if you are interested in buying a RV this um, this September, those the first five people that email me uh, at my email address here uh, with the subject. 500 miles of free delivery requested. Put that in the subject, and uh, what we can do is the first five people will get 500 miles off their, they'll get a credit basically for 500 miles of free delivery. Thanks to you guys, and uh, you're willing to, to help people out like that. So I uh, just shoot an email over, I'll get that um, to the sales folks and uh, just make sure that you get credited for that. If uh, you do end up on one of the live wholesalers.com. Anyways, I appreciate you taking the time, Dave, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us, everybody. And uh, feel free to shoot more questions over. I'll forward those to the right people that can answer them uh, after the fact, and we'll get this recording out to you here in a couple hours. You'll see that show up in your email. So we're excited that you're uh, wanting to uh, get camping, and uh, look forward to being able to help you and glad to help you today save some money and 